High muscle tone and spasticity can be made worse by fear and the unexpected. Today, let's talk about a method called habituation that can help to reduce fear and ultimately help to reduce high muscle tone and spasticity. Let's get into it. History of tone. Think about a time that you were driving in a lot of traffic and the light suddenly turns yellow. The car in front of you slams on their brakes. What happens to your body? Well, your arms tense up, your fingers tighten on the steering wheel, your legs tense as you instinctively slam on your brakes. This is an example of heightened muscle tone happening in everyday situations. And high tone happens to all of us, and most of the time in fearful or unanticipated situations. So what can we take from knowing this and apply it to high muscle tone and spasticity in stroke recovery? Habituation. Habituation, or the ability to get used to some stimulus over time, is a way that we can help to reduce high muscle tone and spasticity. But before I go any further, let me give you some examples to hit this home. Have you ever heard of exposure therapy? It's when someone is forced to confront some fearful situation in a controlled way again and again over time until that situation is no longer fearful to them. To get specific, let's take someone who's afraid of heights. Hello, that's me. So in habituation or exposure therapy, we might take them to progressively higher altitudes with a therapist or a support person present multiple times in order to help them get used to being in higher altitude locations. Now, theoretically, over time, this person will become more and more comfortable in locations like that. The same can be applied to stroke recovery. And while this is a method typically used by therapists with their clients, there are ways that you can carefully apply the method to home therapy. Understanding. In order to apply habituation to your home recovery program, there are a few things that you need to understand first. In order for habituation to be successful, we have to take the focus from internal to external. And what do I mean by this? Well, when someone is internally focused, they might be honed in on exactly how, for example, their affected arm or leg is moving. They are actively trying to move those limbs in a very specific way. Now, in other methods, this is perfectly acceptable, but when you're using habituation, we actually want to avoid this. Why? Well, we have something called procedural memory, which is a type of long-term storage that remembers how to do automatic movements like walking or brushing your teeth, etc. Stuff that you've been doing for a long time. This procedural memory is stored in an area of the brain called the basal ganglia, which is located deep in the brain. In contrast, we have an area called the motor cortex, which is where focused movement takes place. When we're using habituation, we want to target this long-term procedural memory versus that focused movement. And this is because we want those automatic movements and motions to come through rather than trying to intensely focus on the perfect movement, which might increase muscle tone. The method. So how do we do it? In order to have successful habituation, we actually need to be exposed to fearful situations over time in order to reduce that fear. And we can do this by setting a concrete outcome or goal and then adding pressure to the task. So to hit this home, let me give you a real world example of how to apply habituation. Think about when you get that urgent need to go to the bathroom. For people with movement limitations, this can be an extremely fearful situation, especially if you don't have full control over your bowel or bladder. And when fear goes up, muscle tone goes up, which can create a fall risk. To habituate to this situation, you could practice this task over and over until it becomes more automated. Of course, you are only doing these things, trying this, if you have the right supports to keep you safe. That might mean having another person with you, using assistive devices like a walker or a cane, and keeping clear walkways in your house. What this might look like in practice, very specifically, is having another person time you for 30 seconds, a minute, whatever is a safe time to start you out, but that also adds a little bit of pressure. Practice mobilizing with your assistive devices or with a support person to the bathroom from various locations around your home within that allotted period of time. 
Now this does multiple things. It helps to reduce fear of urgent bathroom visits and it targets that long-term procedural memory because you're focused on the end goal of getting to the bathroom, not specific movements. And by reducing fear, we can help to reduce muscle tone, which leads to improved safety. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Before you go, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and give this video a like if you found it helpful. As always, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below if you'd like to sign up for the email list. And if you find value in what we do here at Post Stroke, please consider gifting us, either by giving us a super thanks, by clicking in the YouTube bar below, by giving us a one-time donation via PayPal, or by becoming a Patreon member, where in exchange for a monthly donation, you get access to cool perks like social media shout outs and behind the scenes footage, in and even YouTube shout outs of which I have one today. Thank you so much, Heather G for continuing to contribute at the empower level. We can't do what we do without you. And thank you to all of our other Patreon supporters. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.